What are you doing? Ha, oh, man, doing some cleaning. We've had a shed out here forever and there was a bunch of stuff in it we finally decided to go through. Um, came across a bunch of old plastic, a bunch of jerseys I've collected. This is one of my favorites. My boy Ron gave me his bedazzled from Nuclear Cowboys. Pretty sick. Um, I had actually got a medal in this jersey so I held on to it. Plus I always liked this Fox setup. It was pretty loud and I went with loud back in the day. Uh, X Games Austin, this was the stuff I wore. I don't know if I wore it in the contest, but I was always stoked on it because they gave me a pretty cool little emoji for a butt patch. Yeah, just going through all the stuff. I mean, you got Bilko, Levi Sherwood. This was actually the jersey I wore, the first medal I ever got. I like to call it avocado, but I'm going to hold on to this one and hopefully someday frame it. But then just going through this, I was so stoked on this. I'm bummed I'm going to have to get him to re-sign it. But Nick Way's number plate from the Hangtown National in 1998, I believe. And this was like when they first started like pre-printing the numbers in the background. So I was like so pumped on this. Plus it was, I believe Split Fire, the PC team back in the day. So I was all amped on that. This is Dustin Miller's front number plate from the Binghamton National in 99. We actually graduated high school in June and his dad as a graduation present paid for me and Byton to go with Dustin to the Nationals. He did Binghamton, Steel City, Millville, and Washougal. I was his mechanic, knew nothing about being a mechanic, but you know, rocking the old vented number plate, as you can see, like that used to be the cool thing to do and kept all the stuff on it. So that one's pretty cool to me. I just kind of like to hold on to stuff. You know, someday I, I plan on having a big shop and I think it would be cool to like have all this stuff displayed. You know, I kind of like keeping souvenirs, whether it's my stuff from throughout my career or, you know, just kind of stuff I've came across along the way. And yeah, it's pretty cool to look back on it. This was one thing I was pretty proud of. This was when I was full privateer in arena cross and I rode for AXO in 2001. And I remember like the first couple rounds, Buddy Antonez and Denny Stevenson, they had their like little number one and number th two or three, whatever Denny was. They had them on their boots. I'm like, that is so sick. And then I started winning a bunch of the jump offs and like, sure enough, they came out with this, like this was kind of like a one-off colorway, the red, white, and blue there. And they brought me my boots to a round and had the number on them. Like when you're a nerd from Minden, Nevada and you know, you're kind of like the nobody out there and AXO, a huge company back in the day, brings you this. Called my mom and dad, I'm like, parents, I've made it. So this was cool because the quick loads were new on Scott's. This is Ryan Hughes from Hangtown in 1995. And this is Mike Kodrowski from Hangtown in 95. And you can kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see, there's a little sticker in there. And that was like what the factory guys got. I don't really remember what it meant, but I remember like, you know, it was kind of like the uh, prototype replica quick load tear off system that they came out with. And he's just had the little sweat absorber. I won't say the official name of it just to not make anyone mad. But I used to think these were so sick. Like the print on the band was kind of like flamey, you know, and now it's crazy. 20 years later, these things are just like sacked out like goggles. All of our gear, everything has came such a long ways from, from back in the day. But yeah, it's pretty funny to kind of go through these and check them out. So this box, my grandma used to make me the little photo albums because kids you used to actually have to take pictures and go get them developed and then put them in a photo album. You didn't have like your little photo library and stuff. And actually the first page I turned to, that's Dustin Miller in his backyard. And then that's my first ever trophy. So that's kind of funny. And that's me and Dustin as twins. So this is, this was my first one, the checkered flag one. So this is like all my 80 career growing up. I had a quote from McGrath that I thought was sick, a no fear ad back in the day. And I mean, dude, you could go through this stuff forever. I, like I said, I've just kept everything, you know? And, Kind of never knew why, and I think that actually ended up on a Freerider magazine way back in the day, the Australian Freestyle magazine. My amateur career started in the 80s and, you know, started growing in the 90s, and then here we are in 2019, and I'm just now getting done riding. It's it's pretty crazy, you know, to, to go through. And this was me. I wanted to be – I thought I was going to be in the Army when I was in fifth grade. Look at that hair because I know everyone's going to say something about my hair, but this was almost like a yearbook, like all your classmates signed it and stuff, and this was fifth grade. This is sixth grade. Really get in on that. I got one strapped overalls and a dirty like bang wave that I don't know what I was doing. This is the same thing. It was kind of like a yearbook. They put your school picture on it. All your kids sign it. It's, yep. Motorcycles. That's all bubs. My roommate Brian Foster who wrote Freestyle, he wrote that. Dude, his number was 69 because of me. And I, this is sixth grade. I had no idea what I was talking about. But he's all, dude, what's a cool number? And I'm all, dude, you should be number 69. <laughs>
Okay, so it says, when I think of Mike, I think of, and then Dustin Miller wrote Jeremy McGrath, because I was just, dude, I had so much style. I mean, on and off the bike. That was probably McGrath in Canyon Lake when he was partying. That's probably how he dressed. And that's what I was trying to be like. It's cool to go through all this stuff. Like I said, I don't ever look at it really. It kind of sits in a shed and, you know, it, it definitely brings you back. Like even, I mean, this thing's all ruined now, but Densmore used to make me like little sequenced photographs from Miller's house. You know, it's cool to look back on that and, and just remember the times, you know, and it, it kind of makes you appreciate everything that you did. Oh, get too old for this stuff. Got the safe here. It's where I keep a lot of my valuable stuff. It's also where I keep all my medals. A couple of my favorites. This one will always be one of my favorites. It was actually my first one at the Home Depot Center back in 2006. Kind of wasn't expecting that, so that was pretty awesome. Another cool one, this one's always going to be special to me as well. This was actually my first gold medal, uh, 2012 in the Staples Center for Speed and Style. Uh, me and Nate Adams went at it pretty good and just barely edged him out by a point to get my first gold, so that one will always be kind of cool and you know even if it's a gold bronze silver whatever you name it it's just cool to to leave x games with some hardware so always stoked to have that um have nine in total which is pretty good i never thought i would actually have one and to have nine of them even though a lot of them came from speed and style it was it was pretty cool another thing i think is pretty rad is this ride to the hills one this was in 2005 out at jackpot ranch just outside of santa barbara and you know it was all natural terrain all massive jumps and we had to go out and trick them and find out how we wanted to use the lines. And then, you know, actually all the riders judged themselves. So when I got a second place in that, that was pretty cool that the riders judged me. Cause this was when I was just breaking into the scene and to go out and kill it at jackpot and get this pretty cool little trophy. I liked the way they did it. You know, I was stoked on that. Also another special one to me was this one from LG Action Sports in 2006. I got a second place. That was another one where the courses were just insane. They were some of the toughest courses I think we'll ever compete on. and to go out there and link a, a 90 second run, you know, back flipping dirt hits and, and put lines together, double doubles, you name it, hip jumps. Um, anytime you got a top three at LG, it, it was a big deal. Some other just kind of cool stuff. This is the baseball from the 2009 Dodgers game. We did a little X Games promotion with them. And when X Games was in LA and I actually got to go into Dodger Stadium and throw out the first pitch. And that was pretty intimidating because I played baseball when I was like seven or eight, but took probably a 30 year break there and then had to go throw a first pitch. And that was pretty intense, but I nailed it, of course. And then this is gonna always be one of my treasures. As little as it is, it's James Hetfield's actual pick from the national anthem at uh, Austin in 2015. They played right in front of us and did the national anthem for the event. And I was kind of standing there like, dude, this is sick. I love Metallica. Like Hetfield's literally 10 feet away from me shredding the national anthem. And then he walked over to me, gave me knuckles, said good luck, and gave me his pick. And I was like, I couldn't even say nothing. He walked away, and I was just still speechless. And I was actually the first rider in the brackets with Jared McNeil. So I'm, like, sitting there looking at this pick, and McNeil's already at the gate, like, packing his line and stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, got to get back into it. That was pretty cool. And then this was something cool to me, too. Um, just an old champs card from 91. I got it from Doug Henry. This is the year he won Hangtown. I actually got this at the Hangtown National the year. It was just the full mutter. They did one moto. Henry and John Dowd won it. Some point in the weekend, it was nice. And he was out signing autographs. And I got this card and for some reason held on to it. And, you know, never would have known how much of a legend Doug Henry became. I mean, you know, the, the crash at Bud's Creek will forever be etched in our minds as well as just all the, the cool stuff he did, you know, winning titles and first four stroke win. And so that was pretty cool. Um, other than that, it's, you know, it's pretty basic in here. There's not too much stuff. I got a lot of the stuff in my, in my office that I wanted to hang up. But, yeah, if you ever want to come over to my house and, and steal my medals, just get the combination from me and you're good to go. We are going to go to my local golf course. I'm just going to go meet up with my dad. A lot of people give me grief for how much I golf now, but it's just something to kind of keep my brain going. It's something that's challenging. And, you know, I get to hang out with my dad, and I think that's pretty cool, and all my friends that golf as well. And, as fortunate as I was with all my freestyle motocross stuff, there was a lot of sacrifice. You know, I lost a lot of time with my friends and my family in my local area. So now with everything being done and kind of being able to hang out, it's just an awesome way to kind of gather up some of that time and get back together with all of them. All right, all you guys out there, every golfer needs their essential golfing kit. And this is mine. Brand new glove, because I'm picky. Brand new balls, because I lose them quick. My ball marker, my boy Trotty keeping my water cold that I probably won't touch because I got the Coors Light and some beef jerky to chase my beer. That's the Sunridge kit right there.
I think that's all right. Cool. Anytime I get to spend with my dad is awesome, you know, just go out, play a quick nine with him. No score on the line, really. I mean, we were messing around with it a little bit. It's beautiful, it's November, and we're still out golfing. Usually Reno, Minden area can kind of get covered under snow, so we'll take advantage of it. Yeah, nice. It's not looking good out there, man. I had, what I have on the first, I had five strokes on you on the first hole, and I just grenaded every single hole. I had six hole. strokes on me I had, on the first hole. But I bogeyed, yeah, so wasn't that? I, I had seven over. Oh, yeah, okay. So he really made a come old boy made a comeback. You ready, Dave? Yeah. This is how you do it, okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> I missed it, Noonan. Oh. Is that how you do it? That's how you do it. That's how Mike does it. Now we got Steve Mason for par. Downhill, right to left. He has the pace. Does he have the line? And it's in center cup, Steve Mason. Nice up and or whatever it's called, down and up, whatever. Up and down. Yeah. Thanks, son. That was fun, Steve. No hats off. We don't take our hats off, okay? <laughs> Lots of show up there. All right, let's get a beer. Come on, Dave. 